Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our sweet hour of prayer. Thanks, Beth, for uh, uh, leading us in, uh, in our music today. Beth and Murray are our music volunteers this week, and we thank them for sharing of their, uh, their talents and uh, passion for music uh, with us today. Happy Mother's Day to everyone celebrating. That's right, yes. We're uh, so, so thankful for all of the, uh, the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunts, um, and also those uh, special women who don't maybe have their own biological children, but who, uh, who care for us and are such a, a vibrant part of our, uh, of our church family. Um, we are just so thankful for uh, the ways in which uh, you, you nurture us, you care for us, you're present with us, uh, to all the women that uh, are, are special um, in our faith community, our church family today. We celebrate you today. Um, and uh, so, so happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, a couple of announcements, of course, there are printed in your bulletin, um, but uh, a few things to, to, uh, to note. Uh, really excited to see this uh, this uh, coming together, Fellowship in Rec. Um, that's the group of uh, folks at our church that, that kind of coordinates the fun stuff that we do together. So if you like having a good time, if you like getting together with people or um, kind of having special events and, and gatherings, um, Fellowship in Rec would love to hear from you. Um, they're going to get together uh, this Thursday evening. Uh, at the, uh, the church, and you can see the details there in the, uh, the bulletin. Um, and uh, we'd love to have others join our, our team. Um, and we'd like to have fun together, so uh, you know, reach out to, to Iris or Ed, um, and uh, they'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, a big uh, thank you today. If you noticed um, coming into the church this morning that the, the grounds kind of in the, in the front looked really well kept uh, because they were yesterday. Um, we had a, a work be a, a spring cleanup, and so we're so thankful for all those from St. John's who helped uh, with the cleanup, but also those from St. John's who helped uh, with the refreshments as well. Uh, a great team effort, and of course we were joined uh, by uh, uh, members from our renting congregation, Living Lights uh, Church. They, they came and, and gave a, a big helping hand as well. So we're so thankful for each one um, who uh, was able to uh, to come in and help out, and, and thanks to Ron for kind of coordinating the whole works, and uh, and Roger as well. Um, and we're really grateful for that. Uh, also, save the date coming up, June fourteenth through the sixteenth. We have our second annual. I'm excited to say second annual now. Our second annual seniors. VBS, a Vacation Bible School for Seniors Returns, June 14th through the 16th. Uh, be here at, uh, at St. John's. Uh, first of all, circle your calendar, so go home and do that. Uh, and then, uh, tell your friends about it. Uh, we had a, a wonderful experience last year. Reverend Marie's got a, a wonderful uh, teaching series uh, being worked out for, uh, for those that attend. Uh, and so it's going to be a, a, great, a great week, uh, June 14th through 16th is our seniors VBS. And of course, coming up at the end of May, we're going to be celebrating uh, our anniversary uh, year 191. So that's pretty exciting. 191st anniversary. I've never been to a 191st anniversary party. I'm excited to see what happens with that, but we're really thankful. Uh, Reverend Sean is uh, coming back to visit us. He, uh, he served uh, here as minister um, up until uh, 2015. Um, so he's coming back for a visit, and another friend of St. John's, Molly Pettigrew, is going to come and uh, lead us in the music that Sunday. Really excited for that. Um, so I uh, hope you will join us for our anniversary celebrations at the end of May. At this time, let us take a moment to pause for quiet reflection as we begin to prepare for worship with our call to worship. Let us join in responsibly. We've come to worship God, who loved us before we were yet born, who knows us even better than we know ourselves, whose presence never leaves us. 
and whose love for us, like a mother's love, never ceases. This, this is our God. God. Yes. Let's worship together. Let us stand and join our hearts and voices as uh, we sing faith of our mother. Please be seated and uh, let us come before God in time of prayer. Let's talk with God together. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you call us and invite us to be part of a church family. Your church across the world, throughout the ages, we are invited and called to be a part of your family. But Lord, we also thank you for the ways in which your family gathers in houses of worship like this or, or houses of worship that are that are different than this. But that people gather to worship you, to learn together, to grow together, to encourage one another. Lord, we thank you that uh, we have uh, this, this image of family and this notion of belonging to you and to one another. And it's your incredible love for us that we celebrate this day. Your incredible grace to each one of us that we praise you for and that we learn to, uh, to live within and to extend to others. Lord, for the times in which we have tried to exclude others 
from being a part of your church family. For the times in which we have made a decision on someone else's behalf that they don't fit in, and we, we shouldn't invite them to participate or make room for them at your table, we confess. Or for the times in which uh, we have experienced your grace and been unwilling or unable to extend it to others, Lord. We ask your forgiveness and the strength to live in a way that reflects your grace to each one of us. Your love through Christ, which extends to each one of us. And you are welcome to the Holy Spirit, which by your grace is ours to share. Lord, we, we ask your forgiveness of our shortcomings and the strength and the courage to live in faithful expectation of your presence with us and of Christ's return to us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, the good news is this, that God's grace is a gift for you and I. It's a gift that we cannot earn, but it's a gift that is shared with us freely and abundantly. And because of God's grace, God has forgiven our sins, forgiven our shortcomings, that we can be made right with Him through Christ, and that we may be made right with one another through Christ. Thanks be to God for His loving, gracious forgiveness of our sins. Let us once again join our hearts and voices together as we worship in song. Please stand. been a wild woman this morning, so we'll see you on the floor. But anyway, well, today is a very, every day we get together as a church family is a, is a special day. Well, what is special about today? What special day is it on our calendar? It's Mother's Day. Is anyone else in your mother's group? Come on. Here you go. You're gone. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, that's right. Today, well, today is Mother's Day on, on the calendar, um, and it's a day when uh, we give thanks to to our, our moms or to our grandmas or great grandmas or special aunts or whoever whoever it is that is a, is a, a helper in our lives. Um, that is a woman. Yeah, hi, hi. We celebrated this morning, and um, and we celebrate with gifts and cards and try and. Um, and, and try and provide nice things that we know that our that our moms uh, will like. But today, did you know that today is, there's another name for today besides Mother's Day? You didn't know that. What do you think? Do you have any idea what it might be called? You don't know. Okay. Well, um, so this is also this is Mother's Day, but it's also known as Christian Family Sunday, and it's a it's a day when uh, we also remember that um, we're not just part of like a, a biological family, a, born, a family that we're born into, but we're also part of a spiritual family. We're part of God's church. And God's church is a lot like a family. We, we love each other like, um, like brothers and sisters. We, we listen to um, each other um, like, um, like moms and dads. We provide care for each other. Um, and some people that um, have uh, a lot of life experience, we'll say, um, they, they share their, their wisdom and their experience. And people that are younger, they give, they give up their, their energy and their optimism and their hopeful ideas. We, we work together like a family because we, we do our best to love each other in the way that God loves us. And it's the way that we love each other that tells us how we are related. So we have the same last name, don't we? Yeah, what's our last name? Dorn, that's right. So that's how people would know that we're related, because we have the same last name. But in, in God's family, uh, we, have, uh, we have the same sort of spiritual last name, and that's Christian. That means that we're a follower of Jesus. We're a Christ follower. So, when as Christians, we're like one family, and the way that we um, love each other shows the way um, that God loves us. And um, I know for us here at St. John's, um, we, we see so many people week in and week out that come and are, are present here with us or that join us um, online. And we're also so thankful that we have people, just like um, when you have sometimes family comes to visit. Um, that uh, we have some visitors come and join us today too. Today um, we have Murray's sister join us from all the way from Manitoba. So we're thankful that she's she's come to, to Grimsby for the weekend and that she's she's joined us here. And we also have um, another group of friendly folks near the back. They're they're visiting us from Grimsby as well. And so um, and so everyone is sort of welcome to, to visit to be together here as part of God's family. Well. Um, since it's a special day, uh, we have special presents. Did, did we did we get some special presents today for people from our church family? What did what, what did we get? Use your big loud voice. What did we get? We we found some flowers. Where are the flowers that we that we're going to share? Can you point to them? Let me see. That's right. So. Um, for, for Christian Family Sunday, we want to uh, to share um, some encouragement and, and some love with you. So after the after the service, um, come and see Ella, uh, and she will uh, she will share uh, a flower with uh, with all the all the women that are, are with us today. So um, so we uh, can be remembered of how how special uh, you are, uh, and that this day is a special day for you. So let us. Um, Let's pray together. Please pray with me. Let's pray after me. Dear God, we thank you for our mothers and grandmothers and aunts and other special women in our lives and our church family. Bless them with your love, your encouragement. Your, your, peace your peace and your joy. We love them. We pray.
pray these things in Jesus' name. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us when he prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Right. We head back to the table. I need to do some things back there. And I'd like to invite uh, Helen to come up and uh, read our scripture for us this morning. Good morning, and a happy Mother's Day to each and every one. And also with you. Thank you. <laughs> this morning's scripture reading is taken from 1 Peter 3, 13 to 22, and can be found on the screen. Now, who will harm you if you are able to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are blind, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through the water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. So be the reading for today. Family is wonderful, isn't it? People who love you and encourage you, who nurture you, who whom you can care for and nurture and support, who's faithfully present with each other in, in good times and bad times, in times of, of grief you can gather together, in times of, of joy and on special days you can come together and, and celebrate. Family is wonderful. Family can also be difficult. There can be complicated relationships and difficult feelings. Expectations set and not met. Words spoken in anger or frustration that can tear down, that can discourage. Or, or be harmful. I think we know through our lived experience the ups and downs of family. No family is flawless. And if there is a family that's flawless, they're really good at acting and covering it. Because none of us is perfect. Hopefully we do things from good intentions, from a, a place of love 
and care, but sometimes agendas or opinions or grudges take over. And through the, the good times and through the, the difficulties, like it or not, God has given us family. We can't really choose our family. It's something that's chosen for us by God, whether through birth or whether through adoption. There's so many expressions of family that is carrying units of people. And on this Mother's Day and on this Christian Family Sunday, as we think about the church in general, no church is perfect. A church, like a family, can be a, and should be a place of love and care, of mutual support and respect, a faithful living, a place of encouragement. But also, sometimes, the church can be a, a, a place with strong opinions, with uh, people who maybe pass judgment on others, or who uh, choose their words wisely or unwisely. That can cause uh, discouragement or, uh, or cause people to feel displaced or excluded. As we think of today on, on Mother's Day and Christian Family Sunday, we realize that there are no perfect churches and there are no perfect families because there are no perfect people. But this is not an opportunity for us to, to uh, beat ourselves up on our, our flaws or our shortcomings, but I think if we're being honest with ourselves, we need to realize and recognize that they're there. And that's good that they're there. Because if we weren't, if we were perfect, then we wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need grace. We wouldn't need forgiveness. But we need these things. And God shares them to us abundantly. Through His grace gives us the opportunity to live in such a way that does that as well. Our scripture today is taken from uh, the uh, first letter from, from Peter uh, to the early church. And Peter's letter, to this point, has been filled with words of hopefulness and words of caution. Because the people that were reading his letters were people who were persecuted. They could be jailed or they could be killed because of their, their faith. And in their accepting Christ as, uh, as their Savior and uh, professing to be followers of him, they were at that time rejecting their state religion, which was a pretty big no-no. And so Peter wants to provide encouragement for these people who are going through great suffering, who are living with anxiety, fearing that they may be found out for what they believe in and have their faith put to the test in an ultimate life or death decision. Peter is reminding his readers, his listeners, of the hope that they have, and today that we have, in God. That Christ's promises for those who are, are faithful to him are, are blessings that, that we can receive, that we can count on for sure. Giving them something to hold on to in a, in a time of chaos, in a time of suffering, in a time of fear, in a time of broken. But Peter also cautions his audience. And again, his instructions today are to, to live in a way where they, they live for good. They live out their, their faith in ways 
that are genuine and compelling. Ways in which reflect the light of Christ and the, the warmth of his love and the assurance of his, his promises he made to transform the world around them through the way in which they live and in which they interact and in which they, they share their faith through word and deed with neighbors. But Peter says that even, even if you go through a time of suffering, because no one in this life is exempt from suffering. There's always a season of it somewhere. But it's better to, to suffer because you've done something for the good or for God's glory than for our own intended agenda-driven purposes. But the same is true for us as, uh, as parents or those who nurture and encourage other people. Because these types of relationships, we, we don't face uh, the, the threat of death for what we believe. But we also often live in a way that risks relationship by the ways in which we live. The words we say are the words we don't say. And maybe the ways in which we share our opinions and perspectives. It can be difficult and painful to navigate these relationships. And so I'm, I'm sure that there are many here today who have gone through some suffering on account of people in their family. Maybe a, a relationship is in the family that you have has not really gone the way you thought it would, because someone has has not met an expectation that's been set, or maybe that someone uh, lives in a way that is quite contrary to the, the path that you walk as you follow Christ. And to to those of us in, in these situations. I want us to be encouraged by God's grace. First of all, we need to be gracious to ourselves, knowing that we are hopefully doing our part to live out our faith in truth and integrity, that we are doing our best to follow in Christ's footsteps as we see the way that they are leading us through our lives. And if we are able to see the person in our family that causes us grief the way that we might see Christ, that changes our perspective. It makes it kind of complicated as to what to do with those angry or bitter feelings, doesn't it? Because we don't want to be mad at Jesus. Jesus is our, is our Savior. He's our friend. He's our brother. He's paid it all for us. How could we be mad at Jesus? But it's quite easy to, to be conflicted with Jesus. Remember, at, er, in er, earlier in, the, in Peter's letter, he calls Jesus the cornerstone that the builders rejected. Didn't seem as smooth as, as the cornerstone should. Maybe didn't seem... Uh, to be made of the right stuff, or maybe there were some edges that some saw as as rough or grating. The truth is that Jesus was fully divine and fully human, and through his lived experience, he said some things that made him unpopular, and ended up walking a very lonely road to the cross. Because of that. But thanks be to God that the cross is not the end of the story and that there is hope, that there is life, that there is redemption, that there is renewal. And so for those of us that are living with difficult relationships in our family, we can hope and pray 
for a brighter day. We can ask for, for God's guidance as we navigate through these difficult times, through this painful part of the story. We can pray for God's endurance of the Holy Spirit as we, as we try and get up one more time after we've been emotionally knocked down or our balance has been upset by something said or done or not said or neglected. Because as we, as we think of uh, God's grace to us and the difficulty and suffering that, that we know in this life, we also remember Christ's suffering, verse 18. Christ also uh, died for all, uh, for the right, righteous and un unrighteous, that, uh, we might, that he might bring us to God. And he was put to death in the flesh that we would be made alive in spirit. Jesus' suffering has paved the way for us to endure suffering, to make the most of difficult situations. And his resurrection lets us know that the suffering, the tough times that we go through, are worth it if we follow them step by step. Now, it's going to take a lot of grace and forgiveness. Sometimes um, grace is, is very easy to extend. This morning, there was a, a, a very beautiful Mother's Day card shared in our house. And there were some, there were some questions that were asked about the mom in our house. And one of them was, what mom's age is. And the estimation came in at 70. <laughs> and so we we can smile about that. Some some might get a little bit. But we can smile about that knowing that we're uh, the, the stage of us, we're, we're learning about numbers and what they mean. We're learning about about these things. And that's a, that's an easy thing to, to smile about and, and be gracious about. But there's also so many harder things um, than, uh, than an overestimation of age uh, that I realize that um, are, are difficult to go through. But as we, as we think of the, the difficulties and relationships that we may have in our own families, I encourage us to think about things from God's perspective. Because we are, are God's children. And God hopes and, and knows that we can grow, but sometimes we're going to, to grow in ways that surprise us. We're going to make decisions that maybe don't align with the way in which God has called us to live. But time and time again, he extends that grace to us to learn from the experience and to grow deeper into a relationship with him. And so friends, I want to encourage you today, this, this Mother's Day, that God's gift of grace is for each of us. And sometimes we need to extend grace to others, and sometimes we need to be willing to receive it from others. From others, not just from mothers. I realize I mumbled those words there a little bit. But God's God's grace is a gift. And it's a gift that, uh, that blesses us, it challenges us, and it grows us. But as we embrace it, it reveals us to be followers of Christ, to be part of the Christian family, God's family. Thanks be to God for His grace to each one of us. May we be inspired, empowered, challenged, and changed by God's uh, abundant welcome, incredible patience, and wide reach to draw us in closer to Him each and every day.
Let us now come before God as we join together in singing Amazing Grace on Things of God. For God in prayer again, let's talk with the Lord. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for adopting us into your family. And that through the ups and the downs, through the, the positive relationships and through the relationships that cause us difficulty or pain or discouragement. We know that you are present with us. 
Jesus, we thank you for the ways in which you lived, that you showed us and modeled for us a way of hope and peace and grace to live. And we thank you for the way in which you suffered for us, that lonely road to Calvary's cross that you walked, that none of us would have been able to endure. We thank you for your suffering on the cross, your death for us, and we also thank you, Lord, for your resurrection. Praise God for that, that we have hope for another day, hope for renewed and restored relationships with you, with God, with others in our lives. Lord, we pray for those that are in the midst of family difficulties, through strained relationships, to the the ones that feel almost broken down. Lord, we pray for strength and endurance and courage to find those who need it most. Lord, we pray for peace and healing in our families and that we may begin to un understand and accept what it means to be people of grace and understanding and compassion. And we pray, Lord, that for those that are struggling, that grace would be a two-way street. A, 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 a street where uh, folks can, can walk along beside each other, even though they may disagree, even though there may be hurt feelings from the recent past to the deep past. Lord, we pray for healing and strength. God, we, we pray for those that uh, find today difficult, for those who no longer have uh, their, their mother with them or their grandmother or, or that, that woman who is special to them and provided that nurturing home. For those who, who are, are touched with a tinge of, of grief or sadness today, Lord, we pray that your healing hand will find them and strengthen them and lovingly encourage them. Lord, we pray for those for today may seem like a, a day where expectations and hopes and dreams in life were not met. Some who hope to, to have their own children, to raise their own children for any number of, of reasons. It didn't happen, Lord. For those that are having a difficult time today, Lord, help them to, to understand the great value that they hold in your family. The great value they hold in their own families as loving members, as people who provide that valuable nurture and care. And Lord, we, we pray for those who live in hope of being part of a family, that their hopes would be met and fulfilled, that they would be blessed with the things that they need, and they can understand the opportunities that are coming and have the grace and the strength to live through their circumstances guided by you. Lord, we also pray today for our world. We, we think of the, the uh, wildfire uh, situation in Alberta, Lord. And, uh, and we, pray for, we pray for rain. We pray um, for ideal conditions uh, for the, the fires to be extinguished. We pray for those who are displaced from home. We pray for those um, who uh, are, are losing jobs, who are, are not able now to, um, to have an income, or that's been threatened. Lord. We pray that, that they would be provided for. And that, um, you have all of the resources that are needed uh, to meet this situation. Lord, give us the grace and compassion to shuffle the things around that we have to provide care for those that are struggling. And Lord, we think of those that are struggling closer to home, struggling with grief, struggling with illness, struggling with doubt, living in fear. Lord, may they be loved and comforted. Uh, and by your grace, may we be able to, to speak into those situations with uh, encouragement to meet practical needs. Lord, we pray all of these prayers, as well as the ones we've offered in the quietness of our own hearts. In the powerful, forgiving, 
gracious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us so once again rise together as we praise God through song. Let us sing. <laughs> as we leave this time of worship we know that that we leave and that we come in and we come and go because of God's grace to us God's gift of acceptance and love and welcome a gift that challenges us and changes us let us go therefore with a commitment to embracing the challenge and to living out the change of grace. And may we be blessed with peace in our relationships as we do our part to treat others as we would treat Christ. Go therefore and be filled with the love of God our Creator and Heavenly Father. The deep and amazing peace of Jesus Christ our Savior and the assurance that the Holy Spirit is there to guide us through ways of welcome and grace. Go with grace and peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.